I hope that you have a copy of God's Word with you today, and we're going to be taking a look at Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through um, 11. So have your Bible with you, and, and let's read this passage together. All right. What should we say then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? Absolutely not. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried, or excuse me, we were buried with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin, since a person who has died is freed from sin." Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, because we know that, that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, I ask that you would take this passage of scripture that we have just read and you would teach it to us, that you would be our teacher this morning, and that you would also change us by your word. Father, thank you for this beautiful message that the Apostle Paul has given us. Help us now to walk in its truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This really is just a powerful, powerful passage of Scripture. And, and it's a change in direction from what Paul's been talking about um, in the preceding three chapters. In 3, 4, and 5, Paul's been talking about justification, how uh, man is incapable of saving himself, and therefore, through Jesus Christ, God justifies us. He declares us righteous. Uh, he forgives us of our sins. And um, now we begin to live out our calling. And what does that look like? Well, the problem is a lot of us are still trying to live the old way that we used to live before we came to Christ. Um, you know, you see Christians doing things that are just like they did prior to their salvation. And um, the Bible has a real problem with that, okay? We're to be different. We're to be uh, unique in the world. We're to stand out as different, all right? Um, let's set the context here by reading a verse out of chapter 5, and it's verse 20, and it says, where sin multiplied, grace multiplied even more. You know your history a little bit. You know there was this mad monk by the name of Rasputin um, in Tsarist Russia at the um, beginning of the 1900s. And he um, believed in sinful living. He believed that um, in order for grace to abound in his life, he had to sin more and more. So he got drunk. He chased women. He just lived the most sinful kind of life you can imagine. And he claimed that that allowed God's grace to be manifest even greater in his life. Well, is that what we're supposed to do? Not at all. All right. Look at how Paul begins here. He says, what should we say then? Should we continue in sin so that grace may multiply? In other words, he's answering this question about um, more sin, more grace. Well, verse 2, he begins with saying, absolutely not. This is a declarative statement. No way. We are not to live that way. Okay? 
Paul says this uh, several times throughout his writings, okay? Um, here, it's an absolute no. This is not how God wants us to live, all right? How can we who died to sin still live in it? Well, the answer is we can't. But that's what too many Christians try to do. We come to faith in Christ, and part of that faith is that we place our sin on Christ. We trust his death on the cross for our sins. God placed the sins of the world on Jesus. That included my sin and your sin. So how can we pick that sin up again and continue to live in it? The answer is we're not supposed to. We're not to live that way. Verse 3, or are, are you unaware that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now, the word baptized means to dip under, to immerse. Now, don't think so much about the baptistry waters right now. Think about the idea of the immersion of it, okay? When we were baptized into Christ, we were immersed into Christ. We were covered with Christ. Um, we were also immersed into his death. We were immersed into um the death of Jesus Christ. And this is the picture that we, we try to portray when we baptize somebody here at Elders. I'll lower them in the water, and, and when I do that, I'll say, buried with Christ in baptism, okay? Because that's what we're doing. Christ died for our sins, and we're buried with him. He was buried uh, at the end of Good Friday, all right? but raised to walk in a new life. When Jesus came out of the, the grave on Easter Sunday morning, his life was eternal. It was complete. It was full. This is the life that he gives for us. And so we need to recognize that we've been baptized. We've been immersed into Jesus Christ and his death. Therefore, and if you've ever been to one of my Bible studies, you know when we're studying Paul, when I come to that word, therefore, i got to tell you what it means. That word, therefore, refers to a change in Paul's direction. All right? Could be a minor change, could be a major change, but it's a change. And what came before the word, therefore, has been theological in nature. What follows is practical in nature. So the theology has been, uh, we just read it, we have been baptized. We have been immersed into Jesus Christ. Therefore, we were buried with him by baptism into death. That's the practical nature, friends. All right. We are baptized into his death. All right. In order that, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too may walk in newness of life. There again, raised to walk in newness of life. Friends, this is a beautiful picture of what, of how we overcome sin, all right? We are dead to our old way of life. We're dead to sin. You know, if you go by any cemetery in the world, it's just dead people in it, okay? They're lying there in their caskets or in their urns or whatever. They're dead. They cannot sin anymore, all right? That's the way you and I are supposed to be. We're dead to our sin, all right? Um, in order that we can now live for Jesus Christ. We're dead to the old way of life. We're now living according to Jesus Christ, who was raised by the glory of the Father. So this is how we are to walk. This is the new life that we have in Christ for if we have been united with him in the likeness of his death, we will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Now, there's a big word there, and it's that word if, all right? If you have been um, united with him. If, if you're a Christian, then you have been, all right? Just going to church doesn't make you a Christian. But if you have been united with Christ in the likeness of his death. Now, I'm still living. I'm, I'm almost 60 years old. 
I'm still alive. But when I was 10 years old, I placed my faith in Christ, and I trusted in his death for my own. This is the picture Paul's painting here. For you have been united with him in the likeness of his death. We will certainly also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So if we have died with Christ, we also have been raised with Christ. What a glorious picture that is, that Christ came out of the grave alive forevermore. We don't need to fear death. Even in this time of the, the COVID-19 pandemic, we don't need to fear that disease. We don't need to fear cancers or heart disease or any other form of death because we have eternal life in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> in verse 6 it says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be rendered powerless, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. All right, so here's knowledge that we've got to hold on to. We, that old self, that old nature that we used to li live by, that, that ran our lives before we came to Christ, that old nature was crucified with Jesus, all right? Just as Jesus was nailed to the cross, so we also need to nail that old self uh, to, the, to our own cross, okay? Um, we have been crucified with him. Now, what happened when Jesus' wrists and feet were nailed to the cross? He was as good as dead. He had about six more hours of life left, but he was a dead man because those Roman guards were not going to let him come off of that cross, all right? Uh, he was a dead man. That's the picture here, friends. We are to nail that old self to the cross. We're dead to that old self. It's gone. It is no more. All right? So that the body ruled by sin may be rendered powerless. You know, it's our flesh that... Um, drives us to sin. And I'm not talking about the, the skin covering our body. I'm talking about the sinfulness of man when I say the flesh. That flesh is what um, draws us to sin. The lust of the eyes, the, the gluttony of the tongue, uh, tongue um, listening to things we shouldn't listen to or looking at things we shouldn't look at. These are the things that um, are now rendered powerless when we um, nail the, the old self to the cross. And here again, he says, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Friends, a slave has no choice. The slave must do what the master says. And if your master is your flesh, if your master is um, the lust of the eyes, the, the pride of life, whatever it might be, you're enslaved to it. You can't change it. You're stuck with it. But we have been set free. We are no longer enslaved. All right? Um, where is it? All right. So that the body of, of sin may not be rendered powerless, so that you may no longer be enslaved to sin, since a person who has died is free from sin. Again, go to any cemetery in the world, and you're not going to find a single sinner in that cemetery, at least not under ground. All right, there's sinners walking around looking at the tombstones of their loved ones, but all the dead people, they have been set free from sin. Why? Because you got to be alive in order to sin, okay? Now, here's again the beautiful picture of Christianity. God has made us alive in Christ, not in us. We are alive in Christ, the old nature, that old self, we are to keep dead so that we can walk in in Christ. Verse 8, now if we died with Christ, again there's that if, if it's true, then this is also true. If we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. All right. I wasn't at the cross 2,000 years ago, 
but by faith. I trust that Jesus Christ died for my sins. So I have been um, situationally, if we could say, placed at uh, the cross of, of Calvary. No, oh, I have died with Christ, and therefore I will live with him. All right? Death to the old self, life to Jesus Christ. Because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, will not die again. This is the beautiful picture of Jesus and his resurrection. When he walked out of that grave on Easter Sunday morning, he never had to die again. A lot of people misunderstand the idea of Lazarus's resurrection. Well, it really wasn't a, a resurrection per se, because he still had to die again. You and I will never die if we are in Christ. Think about that. The physical body, yes, all right? But this flesh, this body is not Jim Edmondson. Um, how do I know that? Well, think about it this way. If I was in a car accident and say my right leg had to be amputated because of the accident, am I any less Jim Edmondson? Not at all, all right? Um, I knew a gentleman in South Carolina that had a had a disease that literally was eating his body up and he lost his feet he lost his his legs his hands his arms and what that eventually did was it took his body but it did not take his personhood he still was the individual we all knew and loved okay we are not the body we have a body we are spirit and soul with a body not the other way around Okay, um, because we know that Christ, having been raised from the dead, we will not die again. Death no longer rules over him. Now, I know one day I'm going to breathe my last. I know one day I'm going to close my eyes for the last time, but I will then open them up in heaven. When I stop breathing here, I'll start breathing there, and because who I am is not going to end. All right? For the death he died, he died to sin once for all time. The life he lives, he lives to God. I don't want to, I don't like being disparaging of other Christians. And I got a problem with uh, the crucifixes that uh, picture Jesus still on the cross. He's not still on the cross. He died one time, done. You know, in Ju ancient Judaism, uh, the Jew had to go to the tabernacle later, the temple, to make his, his sacrifice to God. And he had to repeat that year in and year out because it was not a, a complete, a permanent sacrifice. But in Jesus Christ, we have that, that permanence. He died one time, once for sin, for all time. And the life he now lives, he lives to God. That's what you and I have to do. We have to dedicate the life that we have now to the glory of God, living the way he wants us to live. So you too consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Friends, if you're struggling with sin, and really who isn't, this is the key for, for gaining victory. We are to consider ourselves dead to that sin. Um, we're enslaved to God. Think of it that way. We're alive to God. Um, I like the idea of being enslaved to God because I don't have any choice. Now, I've chosen to be enslaved to God. All right? Think about this. If I choose sin, I'm enslaved to that sin. But if I choose God, I'm enslaved to God. And the slave doesn't have any control. The slave just does what his master demands. And what a beautiful picture we have here of God. God always wants what's best for us. He always wants to bless. He always wants us to walk in obedience because he knows that's right and good for us. And we don't have to make Christianity hard. We just do what God says. Read the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Memorize as much of it as you can, but do what it says. Don't make it difficult. When you come across a passage 
that says thou shalt or thou shalt not. We don't need to form a, a committee at church to study it and vote on it. We just do what it says. And that's the beautiful picture that we have of our victory that in Christ Jesus. We are dead to sin, but alive to God. Thank you for listening.